What's going on, everybody? We are the two bright guys. I'm DJ Composition. And we got a, I'm, I'm really the youngest of the OGs now. We got one of my OGs in the building today. Boom. The one and only. Notorious CEO. Lot of dark man. Yeah, yeah. Welcome, what up, what welcome. Up? Th thanks for having me, bro. Thanks for coming, man. Appreciate nah, man. you, man. Yeah, so like we we had um La came onto the radio show uh, a couple of months ago when you had the concert with uh Meth and uh Lil Kim and all them and uh Red Man. And, uh thanks for getting us backstage, by the way, too. Oh, um yes. and we we talked about a lot of stuff off air, and I'm telling Comp like, man, we gotta get bro onto the podcast. Absolutely. So people can hear, especially well, nationwide for sure, but especially the people in Grand Rapids. Because La, you like you might be the second guy I know with a deal from Grandpa's ever, I think the first was like Robert S. I think it was Rob. I think might be the first guy. But like you like the second guy from the city that had a deal. You know what I'm saying? And then you brought a lot of good music looks to the city too. And I think people don't really understand the importance of the music scene and what you brought to the music scene in Grandpa's. So like I want to kind of start off with like um, like your ties from Grandpa's and, and from, from Brooklyn, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you from Crown Heights? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Utica, Schenectady. I don't know none. I don't know what none yeah, of that is. Know, <laughs> I, I really don't know. I'm looking at Rich, yeah. Rich, Rich yeah, and Lyle. Know. I don't know. Yeah. I, and so, then so, yeah. and, and he's an Ottawa alum, but he Absolutely. went to, he went to Union too though. Yeah. He actually dropped about yeah. 30 on the O. Yeah. He, his senior yeah. year, he transferred yeah. to the U. Yeah. He dropped 30 on the O. Yeah. And then he went back to the O to graduate. And I know that. And that's a whole interesting story. I, I tell my sons that. You know what I mean? I, I tell them about that. I'll be trying to get them tapes. I still need you to help me I get need, them my, tapes. I got it. Yo, that's, that's a, that, what what, I, what I, position I, did you play? Point guard. Okay. And I wore number 23 too. Okay. I had the Jordans on and all that. And I had the black socks with the Jordans. I had different color Jordans because I got the pictures and I had to break them out and show my sons because they think it's a game. And I had to show them like, you know, for real. Well, you know I, had I, mean? I got I buckets played out ball. here, right. I played ball, that's before the music because to me, Sometimes the music scene is some things be similar, you know what I mean? To it be the same game, right? Teamwork and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. So it's like I play ball, and if you see a lot of cats play ball, like Cam, yeah, Nelly, Two Chains, you know, Two Chains, a lot of cats that, that you know. But did they, they have the mink games. in high school? Like you had the mink? Lies to come to the no, top. I had the mink in high school. I had the mink actually in eighth grade. So I had the La, mink at La Iroquois. played with TK. Right. Yes. He used to come to the game. <laughs> Yes, and see, Lon came mink. to the game, and he used to come to the game with the, I ain't, he wasn't the only one with the mink from, that he was I with. Was, oh, oh, yeah, we was all, oh, yeah. <laughs> he had the his and hers, man. You know, I got them pictures, too. See, that's why we talking about the documentary. You know, I got all them pictures, my brother. I know, and I'm. You know, and, you know what I mean? For, and I was like 13 years old, you know, 14 years old with the mink and all that. I got, I got a lot of them pictures, so that's another story, but. True story. He came to school it's, with the mink. I was young. He played with TK. And um and then also people don't understand you had a good GPA too. Yeah, I had three eights and three sevens and you know, yeah, it no less than like a three six. My joints was real. I was on the honor roll. And you're the president, you're the class president, mm -hmm. class too, right? Class president and student government. You know what I mean? I was on student government also. I was on student government in high school also. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. So I wanted that I out there. I was very involved. Yeah, yeah. For anybody to know, I was very involved in, involved in school and, you know what I mean, college when I went collegiately. And I was going I mean? there. So yeah. you went to college. Mm -hmm. you, Tennessee uh, State University. TSU. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. What was your major when you went to TSU? Uh, accounting and business administration. I had a dual major. I, I majored in accounting and minor in business administration. So mm -hmm. I was always counting. <laughs> Count oh, the cash. Yeah, right. I was always counting. Like when I first got, that's that, that's another thing people probably don't know. You know what I mean? When I first went to school, I majored in accounting. Cause and that, we was telling, we was laughing yeah. the other day off the camera about the story. You was gonna go to state. I was gonna go to Michigan State. I, damn, and tell him what happened. Like, yo, <laughs> yo, he be doing a lot. Yo, right. I'll be forgetting sometimes. Right. And it's a good story to tell. Nobody, I've never really told that story like, like That's what, that. A good interview, yeah, It's a right? good story to tell. Like, yeah, I was supposed to go to Michigan State. Okay. Really, coming out of high school when I, when I like he said, I, I went to Ottawa, and then my senior year, you know, I had a beeper, and they expelled me for having a beeper. Long story short, but. I had good grades, so I went to Union, mm -hmm. ended up coming back. Ottawa was number one in the state. They was undefeated that year, that year we was coming in. We was like number eight. We was like number eight or number 10. And but y'all had the team, TK got yeah, hurt. Yeah, TK got hurt. Oh, no, we, we that's 
I hope not. So if TK wouldn't have got hurt, we see TK sitting up there with Izzo right now. Right. Coaching, you know what I mean, on the bench with Izzo right now. Shout out to TK. That just show you how true blue he is. Right. He with Izzo right now, Michigan State on the bench. I look at him at TV all the time, show my sons all the time. I'll be showing my son. <laughs> you know what I'm that's my man right there. So y'all y'all stop playing as you see sitting right there. So that's him over there. You know? yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, he got hurt. We would have definitely blasted him if he didn't get hurt. But you know, in the trilogy, they they won a couple and then we won one, whatever, whatever. But yeah, I lit him up. I lit that game up crazy. I hit the first three threes out the gate, all that on some, I used to, I used to like Jalen Rose, so I used to always say Jalen, you know what I mean, when I was shooting, you know what I mean, Jalen, you know I, mean? I thought I was Jalen, you know what I mean, so, you know, I still, and Jalen Rose killing them right now, so, you yeah. know, like I said, you know, it was different stories coming from Ottawa to Union and, and getting there and getting kicked out, but how I got put back in there, I'm gonna go to Ottawa, then the Michigan State story, but how I got put back in Ottawa after we played Union, a, a guy, a white boy, actually called me named Mike Myers. You know what I mean? One, a friend of mine, he got caught with a beeper in school and they only gave him um, three three days of in-house suspension. Wow, I didn't know that. And they actually expelled me. So when he called me, he called me, I'm just sitting at my house, That right after basketball season had ended. Like two days after basketball season ended, I'm still going to Union. He called me like, you wanna come back to Ottawa? I'll, I'll go do whatever, cause they only gave me three, three days of in-house suspension, but they expelled you. I'm like, no problem. Called them, da 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 and called the Board of Education. They knew they were so wrong, they put me back in Ottawa the next day. Mm. And that's how I got back at Ottawa. Like, like, they didn't have no, my mother called them and said, yo, y'all expelled my son. He got better grades, he on honor roll, student government, basketball All player, attendance stuff. is better than ever. And this right. is a predominantly Mike black Myers. school and too. And they expelled me and, let, and gave him three days in-house suspension. They put me back in that school the next day with and no waiver, it, it was crazy. So now that I go back to Ottawa, people looking at me like, I just played against you at Union. Right. So Couple days. The legend was, you know what I mean, it was right. cold, cause now they like, they looking at me and it was, it was ill. That, <laughs> night, you gotta know that feeling. Yeah. That feeling, oh, especially with all the birds and all that. <laughs> I'm back, baby. I'm back. I'm back, back, back in the O. Oh, I'm back, baby. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm back, baby. Yeah. They looking at me like, no, you don't go here. What you doing I'm, here? I, I'm sitting in the class, you know. You know how that, went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that story already. So I like I said, I was supposed to go to Michigan State. But I wanted to get out of Michigan. I was already, I had my classes. I had did my third visit, all that. I had yeah. did my, I had my classes, my schedule, everything. Yeah. I did the freshman lock-in and all that with State. And um, it just, the fit wasn't there for me. And that, that really changed my life. I was supposed to go to Michigan State coming out of get, coming out of high school, but the fit wasn't there for me. The classrooms and everything, it didn't, it didn't fit well, it didn't sit well with me at all. Mm -hmm. My mother was so disappointed that I didn't choose Michigan State. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know what I mean? I just knew people that was going there. Tom was going there, yeah. TK, mm -hmm. and then a, a couple ladies I knew was going there. <laughs> and I just thought I, it wasn't going to be, you know what I mean? I, right. I didn't want to be around the same people. I wanted to explore. And that's how I, I, I ended up doing a last minute walkthrough and everything um, visit at Tennessee State, because it was later. They, they date was later. And, they, and I ended up liking it. And then that's how I got to Atlanta. And that's how really the music thing for me, you know, just meeting the Wu and starting the affiliates and the Gangsta Grills and all that, it all came from the decision so not go to, to go to TSU. Michigan State. But to go to, to Tennessee. To go to Tennessee so, State. So before we get, all right, so let's back up a little bit. So you get to Tennessee State, mm -hmm. you go going to school. How did you run into like the Wu, somebody from the Wu? I, I know the story, but I got to ask mm -hmm. the questions. Like, okay. I don't know the story. Exactly. Um, um, Prior to coming to school, coming to college, I always go back to New York. You know, I'm originally from New York and I moved to Michigan like 12, 13 years old, but I always come out here in the summer, but I always went back to New York because I was for the summer, even when I stayed out here, when I moved out here to yeah, stay. Yeah. So I used to go back and forth. And the, or the year that I was going into college, I went shopping, you know what I'm saying, up in New York, you know, just to get different clothes. Yeah. And I, you know, caught eyes with some guys Happened to be the executive producer of the Wu. I don't know. I don't know this at the time. They just got shopping, which Tyreef Supreme, uh, Devon, which is RZA brother, my man Poop Power. You know what I'm saying? He was doing this thing. So he, you know, that I bumped into him. We kind of caught eyes. So when I went to college, 
these same guys in the foremans, they pulled up, they had the foremans, I had the foreman, I had Who the bins back then. I had the bins back then, I had the um I had the five back then. You know what I mean? Freshman crazy. in college, the TSU. Yeah, freshman in college, Ooh. the TSU. Mm -hmm. I was coming off the beamer and I was coming off the Mustang before that. I had the drop top Mustang I Minnesota mean, society type. Oh, you had the 5.0 with the five. I mean, with it was, cheese. It was the newer one though. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 so your, and your, the, oh, your you know, my resume go back. It was you my had resume that the go o? back. I had that the O. Oh, Ask Decardo, TK. I didn't even have no license when I had the Mustang. Decardo was used to drive for me. Because I'm a year you. younger. Yeah, I'm yeah. the same class, but I ain't even had license. D, D, you know what I'm saying? D used to drive. He'd tell you, D. Decardo Drake. Yeah, yeah. That was crazy. Drake used to drive for me. Me and Drape used to roll. So, you know, just I'm just saying that decision to do that, it kind of changed everything. Just going to Tennessee State and I bumped into them. They pulling up in Lexuses and da 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 And we call eyes again and they like da 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 And you from New York and da 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 I just seen you. So it was, it was so organic, but it wasn't the rappers. It was the executive producers. And I didn't know nothing about Wu-Tang. You know what I mean? So it wasn't like... You know, like you jumped like on, I yeah. even knew nothing. Right. You know, like I seen it. It wasn't like a Kevin Durant type thing. You know what I'm saying? And I like Katie, but it wasn't, but it like, wasn't they, like they was oh, winning. We gonna get to that you know too. I mean? But it wasn't like they, they was winning. Like they yeah. was just already won the championship, and and, right. and, and and I didn't even see that they weren't even famous. So it was so organic. I met, you know, like I said, Rizza brother and his homeboys. Okay. So it wasn't even the rappers. I bumped into them. We caught eyes. We start hanging out. We start hanging out. We was hanging out, going to Atlanta Falcons games, you know what I mean? Going to watch the football, you know what I mean? The Hawks play, such, such, such. They did, now, they the first person that took me to the strip club in Atlanta. Like, I'm the first person that it took, took me, me to the strip club in Atlanta. We gonna get there, yeah, yeah. Word, they the first people that took me to the strip club Word. in Atlanta. The same story that you gave me, they did that with me. And I'm gonna get a so story on air, too. So I got there, boom. So that's how, and then a guy told me, yo, these guys from Wu-Tang, because the Wu-Tang album had just dropped a little bit, but it was bubble. It didn't bubble for a couple years later, you know, it didn't yeah. blow up out the gate. So yeah, I was like, yeah, you know what I mean, Blase Split, and I ain't really believe him. But then a couple days later, Meth flew down, and we ended up going to the studio. So we in the studio, and one of my homies that knew I could rap, like we had been hanging out for a couple months, they didn't even know I could rap. See what I'm saying? So and we you didn't know they was Wu? And I didn't know they was Wu, you know what I mean? So then, my homie tapped me while we was in the studio. I was like, yo, I could rap, rap for him, lock. And he was really encouraging me, and Meth was doing his thing, doing his thing, and Meth passed me the mic. But then I just laid it down, and I freestyled. I don't even know what I said. I, I couldn't, to this day, tell you one line. It was just mm. a freestyle, and it was so cold. It was like, I was like, I caught the glow. I just remember it, like on some Bruce Leroy, Last Dragon. Mm -hmm. It just was on, everything was on, and Meth was like, mm, and then we just, it been on ever since. So then, what did they did they take the the information back to RZA or how did how did it work? No, we was already dealing with we was dealing with the bosses right there. Yeah, they, they, had had no they, they had to go no, nowhere. The executive producers, the the money, the money, the money who bought RZA the equipment. We they didn't have to go nowhere. We didn't okay. have to move one muscle. Hey, so when you was, went, you was already with the was, head guys. Woo, that's how I go. Yeah, I was with the bosses. I mean, RZA was one of the bosses, but it was four or five bosses, and I was with three of the four. Okay, so. It it was like it, it wasn't even on no music thing. It was on some. We already we already thing. know this guy. Right. Yeah. So it was it was just all organic and easy it was at that so point. On, yes, it was. All okay. praises do. Yes, it was for me. Yes, it was. I'm you know part of the greatest family I've ever seen. You know what I mean? Like being a Klansman is like being a Kennedy. That's like being Wu Tang is like being a Kennedy. Like you'll never know where the Kennedy a pop up. A senator, whether it's Arnold Schwarzenegger wife or right. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or they raised Bill Clinton and you know, what I mean their endorsement for him and you know his likeness to JFK, the Kennedys ring out. You know what I mean? So the Klan, the Wu, Wu Tang ring out. Wu so, Tang ring out. So after you did the, after you freestyle for them, like did it pop right away? Like yo, like you getting an album, you getting a deal? Or how did they? How did that matriculate into? Free, see, this way it get deep too. Okay, I freestyle for them and we just were still hanging out. They offered me a deal. They offered me certain things, but I didn't really take it. I didn't really take it. We just was cooling, we was cooling. They offered me some paperwork. I didn't really take it. And why not? Because most people would jump at that money. Yeah, a lot of people would just be like, yeah, oh, so, I, this is it. So now the whole, so that's backtrack for the people. You had, people don't understand this legend. You had the Mustang at the O, no L's. You get to college, a freshman, got the Beamer, 
Mm. Then you get offered a deal and you 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 Floyd shoulder roll it. Ah, I'm straight. Word, girl, yeah, money may. Shout out to money may definitely because I already had my own money. That's what people didn't fail to realize. When I started, I had my own money. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I went to school with over a hundred K. You dig what I'm saying? Just when I was going to school. So I already was it really didn't appease me. It didn't do nothing for me. I understood that I can get it. It was like, okay, I could do this. I knew the opportunity was real, but then I went back to New York. I went back to New York and I started freestyling on the radio and started messing with the DJs and freestyling in New York. Then I went to Stretch Armstrong, had the radio show, and I went to Hot 97. I freestyled on Hot 97 twice. And then the people from Atlantic, Craig Kalman, they called Stretch Armstrong. See, my, like a lot of people don't know, my first deals really didn't have nothing to do with, with really Wu Tang as far as orchestrating it. It just, I was down with the clan, but they never walked me in the door nowhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, I was right. down with the clan, but I went to New York and like start bubbling. You know what I mean? I start freestyling, doing my work, doing the clubs, doing it, you know what I mean? And then Craig Cowman, who was still the chairman at Atlantic, yeah. who ended up giving me the same affiliates music group deal that I did and Zekka produced all the Gangsta Girl albums was under. See, that's what people don't we know. We're gonna get there too. I'm See, I'm people gonna don't get know weird. the connection we, 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 to that. We, we, we yeah. put okay. the ingredients so together. Yeah. We about to cook this thing up. Craig Cowman called Stretch Armstrong. And Lord Sear, and Lord Sear's still on Shady 4-5 right now. And now da 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 he, Lord Sear was like one of my first interviews ever, you know, on Hot 97. So Craig called him and was like, yo, da 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 He could stretch call me. Stretch walked me in, kind of like MC Search walked Nas in. Yeah. Stretch or Armstrong said da 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 And I came and they heard my music, heard my music, and they signed, they, they wanted to sign a deal. So I signed the Atlantic for Heist of the Century. I didn't even have a name of the album that then, but I had I Want It All. You had I Want Okay. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Did I have I Want It All? Nope. Did I have I Want It All? Mmm. Damn. I but you had, you, had, a, you, you had a song on question. there. question. Did I have I Want It All? I think I did have I Want It All at the time. So you were recording uh, well, at this point? No, yeah, I was recording. What they, they started from the freestyle, then I think I did I Want It All later. Okay. I think I did I Want It All a little bit later after that, I think, you know what I'm saying, right around the same time. I think, no, 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 it was right around, and I did have I Want It All. I did have I Want It All, because I was pumping I Want It All, and I was freestyling at the same time, and I was performing I Want It All. That's what happened. And then, they, you know, Craig called from Atlantic, you know what I mean, and da 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 and we signed, I signed a deal to Atlantic, my deal for Atlantic was like half a million. You know so what I mean? So first was, deal my off first top. deal off top was half a million, 550 actually. And this 550. is in what year? This was, the, that was 96 when 96. I signed that deal. Okay. Yeah, that was 96 when I signed that deal. I signed the deal 96. Yeah, 96. Yeah, I'm not, you still, you still, 96. You're, still a, you're still a youngster still. I'm still a youngster, fresh out of high school. I'm still a youngster. I'm coming and I'm up and coming and then I never, put the project out. I was recording with the project and at the time I did songs with Old Dirty Bastard. I was doing songs with Davina. I was doing songs with Loud. I was doing songs with Soul Assassins, the Dre on there, Wyclef on there. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was on there. So I was already working, bubbling it on my own. And I was like, what Atlantic do for me? Like, you know what I mean? They gave me 550, but they didn't do nothing after that. I yeah. was doing it already and I already had money before that. They gave yeah. me more money, but I had already turned the deal down. So I kind of got a little bit frustrated with them and I told them I want to take my, my my services elsewhere. And they was like, duh, 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 duh. And they, you know, they signed, they was supposed to get the money back, but I didn't have to get the money back because that's when RZA came in. I called so RZA, RZA. came down? And that's when RZA came down and made it, and, and you know, told him, yo, this is my little homie, Blase Splee. And then I had to get the money back and we walked off. And RZA, you know, they was, did, was gonna do further other business, favor for a favor type. Yeah, so, okay. you know what I mean? I, I got out of that contract. So, and I was and you kept the bread? Disco. I kept the bread. I kept the music too. Oh. Kept the music too. Had about six, seven songs. That's then I went and played that for Jimmy Iovine at Interscope. We were supposed to sign the Interscope. You as it's an individual crazy. or? Me as an individual, okay. a lot of dark man. Supposed to sign the in Interscope. Interscope offered us 650,000. <sighs> you know what I mean? And um, the guy that signed Tupac, the lawyer, was um, like the passion in my voice was like Tupac, I remember like yesterday, and we were supposed to sign with them. This is right when Dre signed Eminem, and Jimmy Iovine asked me if Dre would ever make another hit. 
You know what I mean? This is when I first had met Jimmy. Like people don't know yeah. a lot of these stories, but I was still gonna sign with Jimmy. But then I decided to go independent. I had 650 on the table from Jimmy, but Navarre Distribution came. They were a rock label distribution. Yeah. They had just got into hip hop. They gave me 750,000 to stay independent. So really people thought I was on Loud. People thought I was on Def Jam. People thought, they always asked me that to this day. Nah, we was on Supreme Team. We was an independent label through Navarre Distribution. So we okay. did it Master P way, way back then. Way back yeah. then. Because I, I ended up dropping the album 98, 99. It was November 24th, 98. Mm -hmm. So it rolled over into 99 because it was independent. So it didn't get anywhere. To, so I was making the album for a couple more years. But I did it E40 and Master P way, way back then. Right. See, a lot of people caught on to Master P them later. But I, I did that on my first album, my first production. It's so many years before a lot of other rappers, right. the way Jay went, I got yeah. the distribution. Right. And and so when I got the distribution, we already had our own label. We blew it up, ended up selling, you know what I mean, like 375000 independently. Independent. So that's triple that's still platinum. Good money. That's different. Over that's a whole every, yeah, different ball At $7 game. an album. We, we generated more than like, like then they're like, like 20 million, almost like, like really like 15 and some change. And this 98. Yeah, this 98. So Pre-internet. 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 All, all hard copies. 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 And it, so from oh, that. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Let me People got to understand that, man. Yeah. All, hard copies, yeah. all hard copies. And also. Yeah. The radio push. The radio Because back then, radio mm -hmm. was everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and you talking, mm -hmm. see, what people don't understand and that- you did this without a super big radio presence. Of course, of course, of course. So of this course. was just straight grind, the master hustle. The way. Yeah, and they don't out even the trunk, hand-to-hand. Yeah, hand-to-hand, yeah, hand getting, hand, getting, getting it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was always into that. I just took those same tools and built the affiliates and gangster grills and all that whole movement. It was the same independent mentality. Same mind frame. You know what I mean? So, but it all came from Heist of the Century, you know, the Wu Tang brand, the way we was hustling with the Wu, mm -hmm. the way I was able to hustle with the Wu. So once I did that, if you notice, I only really dropped one solo album. Right. And I've been doing very well, the heist of the century, and I ain't even drop another one. Because I started opening years later. up businesses yeah. and stuff. I started opening up <clears throat> labels and record companies and management, different businesses all that. and management. Right. Kind of, I started affiliates management and all different other things. Mm -hmm. And I ain't even, I had forgot about rapping. <laughs> word, word, word. Okay, I had to look up and was like, damn, <laughs> this shit all started from me Being rapping. rapping. Okay, right. so. You know what I mean? Like, it, it got interesting. No, for real. Favorite song off the album? Heist of the Century? Yeah. I don't know. I ain't never really have no favorite Your song. Your favorite? You don't got a favorite song off the album? No, I got about five that it's a 10 that all kind of go in line with me. Like, I couldn't even name one to start. But like, see, it's like, a, a, uh, but, but an album, how, how when, do you, I do when you make yes, an album, yes. it's like a, a child, man. And yeah. it's like, I can't just be like, oh, I like my child's Especially eyes. Especially not that one, yeah. Yeah, that like one. out the gate, yeah, like it's a whole. That. Yes, please it's explain a whole it to them. Some people got a favorite kid. I'm just, but hold on, but this is one kid. <laughs> they might love him differently, but some you know, people got a favorite kid. I think he broke kid. it down. I think he broke it down a little better. Yeah. Well, I don't got no kid though, so. the, the child, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Don't, but yeah, that album that. is yeah. like a child, like that. he yeah, birthed yeah. it. You mm, know what I'm mm, saying? Yeah. And 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 you can't just be like, I like this just one specific. Just me thinking plan. about yeah. it, I can't even do right. that. Right. Like I mean, I'm being honest. I'm trying to think about it. Like in the whole process of creating that. And I was gonna name this one and this one and this one. Then I would have just been naming them all because they all mean something. Five to ten that I'm gonna go through because it's like eighteen on there. So I'm gonna have about at least about ten favorites. Because I always text you about love. Every time I'm running across love, I always hit you with that. You know what? And that's the truth. Only one. And that's a true story. Because you had was Mia Campbell on the hook, right? Mia Campbell. Mia Campbell. Yeah, yeah. LL Cool J. In the house. In the house, beautiful. People Maya. don't understand the that. Beautiful Maya Campbell. They, they don't understand even, that. Like, way that was, before this time, the beautiful Maya Campbell. Yeah. You know what I mean? She was so beautiful. When I met her, oh, my, my, my. That's it was my real. I took her to everybody. Harlem and yeah. everything. I took her to Popeyes, mm. too. Took her to Popeyes? <laughs> I took her to Popeyes. She, and she was loving me, too. Had in the Land Cruise and all that. I took her to Popeyes, too. I took her to Popeyes because I knew everybody else was doing all, all the, that other. Nah, we gonna get this. We gonna get this biscuit. Kilter. Let's do Kilter. it. She, you know, she looked like me. She right. was luck. Yeah. You, you pulled the Martin on thin line. It. Right. It. Pulled that Martin on thin line. Is that what happened? Ain't number little fish. Maybe yeah. took it to the hood. Oh yeah. Ain't number little yeah, fish. Oh, oh, I took it. Oh, I did it. Look, look. Calm down. I did do that. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even know it. Remember it just was yeah. natural because yeah. I knew. 
Her status was so up, they was picking her up in limousines and uh, you know, they was doing all the fancy restaurants dance and you know, and I was like, we ain't even gonna do that, B. We're going to Popeyes. You know what I mean? We're going to Popeyes. Cause you, you know got I mean? and I brought that up like, with her because up. like you said, you like you bass song. You 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 work with Jay Dilla song, right too, right? Have you, have you worked with Dilla a little bit? Oh, yeah, I work with Dilla. Yeah, yeah, Jay Dilla. We just actually did Dilla Day in Detroit, too. But, you know what I mean? Um, da, 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 da. I worked with Dilla on Invisible Rules. It wasn't on the Heist of the Century, though. No, no, okay. it was after the Heist of the Century. Okay. You know what okay. I mean? So the legendary Dilla, RIP, yeah. You know what I mean? We actually just did Dilla Day, too. Jay Electronica, Obi Trice. Royce to 5'9". I've been riding yeah, through Detroit yeah. with Jay Dilla. Jay, yeah, I've been riding mm-hmm. with Jay Dilla. It was after Heist of the Century, though. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so so you did the album. After the album, we transitioned into um, the businesses and everything of that nature. And then we get to the affiliate. So mm-hmm. could you, you you see he still got the A-chain. Mm-hmm. Of course. Still got the A-chain. Of People don't understand the logo is, is yeah, property it, of- It's property of LAD. It's you know LAD. I mean? People don't understand here. that. Yeah, I put this all together. I mean, the, uh, from the logo to the clothing line, to the AMG wear, the sports wear, to the embassy, to the you know ownership or the affiliates music group. I'm the man behind it. I really had the vision and it took a couple other players to make it come to fruition. But most of the music you hear on all them Gangsta Grill albums, if you read it, it say Lasson Jackson, a and off executive producer first before anything. And I, I, I'm a key team player, so I put different names on there too. But if anybody tell you, the long nights in the studio putting those music together, I was like the RZA to that chamber. The whole situation. So, you know what I mean? Because the long nights in the studio, all the music, 5001s, that beat came from me. I got that beat from Jazzy Faye. I had a thousands of beats. I picked that one from Jazzy Faye. I picked to put Nelly on it. I picked to put Willie the Kid on it. I picked to put Young Jock on it. I picked to put T.I. on it. I picked bun to B. put, uh, now Bun ain't on that he one. Ain't on 5, he ain't on 5,000 ones, but I'm just giving an example, right. you know, uh, for the, to start the affiliates and the Gangsta Grill album movement, it was, coming out of my mind, the look. Now, drama, of course, was the voice, you know what I'm saying? But all so how the did it come about? Making, like, yeah, but how did it come about? Um, we, we all was cool together. We all did music, see? We knew each other for years. You know what I mean? Cannon went to school with Willie and drama and them went to school with Willie. They was a little older, but Cannon used to be Willie roommate. Yeah. So it was like, we always been together and I was already doing my thing. I was already doing Heist of the Century touring, Wu-Tang, da 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 So it was like, they was already doing music, just DJing, really, yeah, when I yeah, met them. It really yeah. wasn't, like people think, no, it really wasn't no big affiliates thing. It wasn't nothing when we Until met. You got it was there. just DJing, yeah. And, they, and I was like, I'm gonna put all the DJs together, and we're gonna all come together and make a unit, yeah. and make us a unit, you know what I mean? And once, I, once we made it all the unit and balled up as a fist, you see what happened next. Right, because Drama just, wasn't, he wasn't T.I. DJ at that time. No, was he it? wasn't T.I. DJ, he was just doing mixtapes. Drama actually started, he was like a um, a Bahamadia DJ. Okay. He was one of those type of DJ, more eclectic. He, it wasn't even gangster He's from Philly, he had the dreads and stuff, right? dreads and all that. It wasn't really okay. gangster to it, but it just started getting gangster. And actually since, you know what I mean, gave him the idea to do down south music, cause he really was doing, you know, the, like I said, Bahamadia type the music, soul. neo soul. The boom back kind of. Sense was like, nah, that ain't gonna work around here. You need to do this, and he started playing with the down south music. So that's how that came about with just the down south, you know, what I mean, the artists being on the tapes and stuff like that. But the tapes wasn't even dominant, you know. what I mean, we start pushing them on the campus, you know, like I said, and and once we all sat down, we we agreed, yo. We're gonna do this together. I do this, you do that, you do that, you do that. Let's go. Shoot, start drawing like, the play no, up. You start drawing the play up. It, it was, you and know, then everybody yeah, executed. Everybody executed. You know what I mean? But that's how it was. It was very organic. It wasn't like we all was always sitting around each other, eating and, and talking music and doing different things. I just said, yo, let's, me and Sense really, and I was telling Sense, and then Sense was like, yeah, that makes sense. And then me and Sense told Drum and Willie, of course, and then told Cannon, and then it was just like that. It was like, okay, let's do it like this. Um, and that was a great movement. It was ahead of its time, I think, personally. Um, but like you said, everything that you've done up until this point was organic. Mm-hmm. So when you when you got to TSU, you know, that, that transition from MSU to Tennessee State was mm-hmm. kind of an organic transition. Mm-hmm. You met the people from the Wu, organic situation, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And I'm still tripping off the fact, like, do you think, um, just to backpack, uh, backpedal a little bit, turning down the money from Jimmy Iovine 
do you think if you would have taken that deal with Jimmy Iovine, your direction, um, because you still went in a great direction, but do you think it would have been more of a music or rapper standpoint? If you were Iovine, Interscope, would you think that you would have probably rapped more or you'd still think this is probably would have been the outcome? I think this probably would have been the outcome because if you listen to Heist of the Century, even on the song Love, I'm a businessman before an artist. Yeah. Okay. I've always been a businessman before an artist. Okay. You know what I mean? So yeah. my, that love umbrella, always, yeah. my love is always to do business before the artist. I, I'm an artist too. I love it, of course. I'm definitely a pure artist, but I'm always a businessman before the artist. So I think I still would have ended up doing business regardless. Okay. You know what I mean? I would have ended up doing business regardless. I don't I don't think and then the time how they was doing different things. You know what I mean? I probably needed to be independent. You probably need to be in that surround. I probably didn't need to that, be. That death right. roll, that. Yeah, that's a whole and just all another that. story. <laughs> all the red tape. I, you know, I had met with Suge. Yeah, all the red tape. All the red tape. So you tape. met with Suge too? Yeah, I mean, after. I met with Suge when Suge was. was, 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 was the was, red was, soup Suge. The red soup Suge. <laughs> Me and my so man. Daddy Yo. cigars everywhere. Me and my man, Daddy Yo. Daddy Yo, big in Brooklyn, one day. We, Daddy O big in Brooklyn. Daddy O is the dude from the purple tape. When Ray talk about, yo, Daddy O home now, you'll get the text now, he on the purple tape. He say, he say Daddy O, you can probably hear whatever, whatever, Daddy O, I forgot whatever song, but me and Daddy O, we in the, in the joint in LA, should come in there and run Exhibit out of there. Exhibit is in there. Should come in, yo. It was like Paul Revere was coming. <laughs> this was a real, this was a real story. Yo, this Whoa. is a real story. Whoa! <laughs> okay. I didn't know it go like this. We in the bowling alley in Hollywood. Okay. You know it's popping. All I hear is she'll coming. She'll is coming. Somebody Shug ran up coming. in like somebody. Yeah, somebody <laughs> ran up in there like. Got on? And, 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 uh, I don't know what. Remember Martin? Uh, uh, show enough is coming. Man, <laughs> show enough is coming. Like, and I'm thinking, I'm looking, I'm like, damn, this shit really, he got that shit. <laughs> like, I mean, it's just ringing, sugar coming, sugar's coming, you better get up out of here. The nigga Exhibit put on his jacket, the nigga got low. <laughs> Word, because Exhibit was in there. Damn, man, he my homie too, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's it's really, it is right? what it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> got low, yeah. you know what I mean? No, matter of fact, he, he couldn't get it fast enough. <laughs> so he was he was getting low. I guess I, he, I think he was trying to come out. And as he was trying to cut, get out, he ran into Shug him. was coming in. Suge was like, yo, you know you a bitch ass nigga for that, yo. You know Suge was just, and the nigga just was looking. And Suge, you know, did his little shit and, you know, let the nigga walk off or whatever, whatever, whatever. But he called him a couple names or whatever. But yeah, Suge was real. So my so my man Daddy Yo, to get how we how we met him, he coming through, you know, Risen him already known, but that they had it had it run in with Suge one time in Vegas. They got they got the Tyson fight. The Tyson fight, the change and all that. Six six dudes. Pac was talking about that. Yeah, Pac was talking about that. Risen him had to run in with him and then they had to get the chain back and then whatever, whatever. I forgot. Say Pac got it back, right? Pac said he got it back. He said when he was something happened to him and he didn't and he didn't get the he felt like he didn't get the same respect. He was like, cause when 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 stuff happened around people that he liked, he said he mm. he basically got the chain back or told them that they yeah. violated. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, well, did I, I I didn't know the whole details, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I knew it was something real. You know what I mean? But um, my man Daddyo goes up to Shook like, yo, I'm big in New York. You know, you big out here. I'm gonna meet with you. So and I'm with Daddyo. So we you know he, he Shook. We set up a time. We go to the office, play some music for him, chop it up with him, blah, blah, blah. It wasn't really nothing. My daddy was trying to give him an act he had from Vegas. So they was talking about some da 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 da, but we just was letting him know we in town and, you know, we in town. So. And, and yeah, you know, we, you know we around saying? too. Yeah, we around. You know what I mean? <laughs> we, we around, around it too. Was, it was hard. Daddy, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing the whole time. I'm laughing. <laughs> My homies is hard, so I'm laughing, you know what I mean? I'm yeah. laughing, you know. I'm laughing still how I'm laughing right now. Uh -huh. Cause I'm like, yo, we meeting with Shug. You know what, <laughs> what I mean? And just on some G. You know what I mean? Right, yeah, yeah. Just what's up, homie? Right. You know? <laughs> because he got the rest of the world shook. Oh yeah, he got them shook. Yeah, we not those. We not those. We just letting them know. We not yeah, those. Ain't we, no such thing as halfway crooks. No. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. No, we ain't and, those. And, and most times them people he, know. He loved it. Yeah. He loved it. He messed with us to this day. Yeah, and most yeah, people know no who to pull shit. that on and who not to pull that on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And like, so they, they'll try it with certain people, but like you said, y'all went to him. Like, yo, we, we, we around. We never had no problem with Shook. I bet you got a whole bunch of stories, man, that we yeah. could just trigger and talk about, man. I was at the first Source Awards when Suge did what he did 
When he said come in to New death York. row in New York, I was there with a backpack on. I was there. I was a little kid then. I was just hanging, like I said, I was just hanging out with them. Mm-hmm. I just found out who they was. I wasn't recording nothing. I'm there. I got the VC, VHS tape somewhere, but I was there. So I know what That's it like is. history to witness. I, it was history. I learned so much from right there because it could have went wrong, but Puffy played it so classy. So I'll Puffy give him a shout that. out to Diddy, yeah. Because Diddy, if he would have said the word go, if he would have said go, it would have been a slaughterhouse. They wouldn't have made it. Nobody, it wouldn't, it, they wouldn't have made it, and it would have been a lot of casualties, and we all would have looked at like, um, you know, we all would have looked at like surprise savages. Yeah, mm-hmm. as for the culture in general. Yes. He, he taught me so much that day. Yes, we we all would have, because Suge tried to make it go down. And that's why you see the difference between Puffy today and Suge today. Right. And people don't understand the power that the Puff power, had back then. Yes, yes, because both of them Wu's really was but... deep. No, Death Row was deep. Death Row was like 20 deep. Wu Tang was like 30 deep. Biggie was like 20 deep. You know, Mob Deep was like 10 deep. So it was going down. And then it's in New York. But snooping them is real. You know what I mean? I, that's when you know who was real, because they was real. Snoop is real. That's, look at Snoop today. Yeah. Snoop is real. Right. You know who real? Look at Fat Joe. Certain people who real yeah, Joe, last yeah. forever. Last. And that's why I've never really had no problem, because I've been so real, and not in the fake way, but just authentic, because you know, real, the word real is you know taken out of context. It's, it's, down. Down. it's, 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 it's taken lot. out of context. So I'll just say authentic that I'm still here. Like from the two of the greatest movements ever, from the Wu Tang movement to the Affiliates Gangsta Grill movement, the, everything is historic. You know what I mean? That I do and and I put together, and we coming with next things right now. But mm-hmm. it's historic. You know what I mean? So people got to really understand that. That's why you know some of the stories is crazy. Like like I said, I was there. I looked in Suge eyes, but Suge looked in Puffy eyes. And like I said, if Puffy would have said go, it would have been a slaughterhouse. Because he looked at him right off the stage. Because he? he looked directly at him, and I'm looking at him, and I'm a little kid. I'm thinking like, yo, I know he's not gonna get away with this. And I tap my big homie. I'm like, yo, what's up, bro? He like we waiting on the word. And if Son says go, we bro, you know he talking to him. So we're going to see how they're going to play it. Because it, it, it wasn't y'all situation. It wasn't all situation. But well, it's it a New York. It's a New York thing. But Diddy, like I said, that's why Diddy getting all that money he getting right now. Because it all started right then. He didn't want to see the slaughterhouse. And he knew better. The wrong move would have ended and everything. The wrong move would have ended everything. And nobody would have got and, no bread. And no, but none of that bread that all of us end up coming up getting. Would have been gone. It would have been gone. And that's, see, and that's my story. That's a, nobody never told that side of the story. I'd be hearing, you know, different people tell that story about the because social Shug, Because nobody Shug was a, a loud point. that difference. See, I noticed yeah. that difference. Nobody said, let that be noted when it come out. Nobody said, from that source awards, if Puffy would have pulled the push the button, the go, yeah. It would have been savagery all around in that building. So many casualties of war would have happened that hip hop and, and the Source Awards probably wouldn't have kept been able to keep going. Nope. And, you see, know and, and so many major so many elements men, in that so many room. In that room would have never got to them 400, 300 million marks because of that slaughter. Somebody could have died. It would have died. Somebody could have died. Few people would have died. More than somebody. Yeah. That would have been like St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Innocent people too. That would have been St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Because you got Massacre. people from New York who, not rappers, they going to get on it. And also, too, um, like more or less, it sounds like the Back to the Future when my man went back and erased. You ain't born. It's some folks out here that never make it part of the tree because that room We've just went crazy. crazy. Well, see, I heard, also heard the story too Bad about day. about. Um, let me let, let it know. Lad said that first. So when first. everybody try to talk about they source, because I've never heard nobody even know yeah, that, that point of view. One. Right. They didn't note that. They didn't see it like that. That's right. how I saw. It. Right. I saw. That's it the like, right way mm, because they yeah. um when Pac and Nas had ran into each other. And they said, like, Pac went up to Nas and was going off, and Nas had like 40 people with him. I think it might have been Pac and Snoop. You said Pac went up to Nas and was going off? I mean, they were, they were going back and forth. Mm-hmm. Remember Pac, I mean, Nas rapped about it, you know, at mm-hmm. the MTV or whatever, the mm-hmm. studio. Mm-hmm. And Snoop was like, man, I give Nas a lot of credit because he could have destroyed us. We had like four people in one gun. And Pac was going off, but Nas deaded the whole situation, and they shook hands and hugged afterwards. But he was like, Nas really could have destroyed us right mm-hmm. there. It was like the Central Park or something. And real quick, mm-hmm. just from this story, 
that further just kind of cements that keeping your cool at all times mm -hmm. is always the best play. Mm -hmm. Cause they didn't want to do nothing in public anyway. That's folks, on camera. Because if, mm -hmm. if folks respond it out of emotion, went wrong. yeah, it could have been bad. It would have yeah. went wrong every level. Every level. And like you said, all the money in that room, the brands would have been diminished. Yeah. See. That's how I see it. Yeah. Because you was ready. You was like, well, because I'm asking. I'm first. <laughs> I'm going first. <laughs> I was finna get mine today. <laughs> get mine today. Right. For real. That's how I was when I was young. And I'm like, yo, ooh, this, ooh. Ain't no telling what's in the backpack. <laughs> oh, yeah, ain't no, real jazzy, whole, talking real nothing, jazzy that's a whole stage nother in story. New York. That's a whole nother story. And I got my backpack with me. That's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother story. You funny for even saying that. Cause I ain't even say that. <laughs> no, I mean? Tell him what's in yeah, the back. So now, yeah. what's up? That's, uh, ain't nothing. You know what I mean? We just, I'm just saying. No, no I'm, I'm saying, not, not with that. I'm talking about you saying when Suge said that. So you like, all right, what's up? Oh, so I'm like, what's so up? So think about who, who with Puff and them who like, what's up? Or oh, who everybody with, you know what I'm saying? Was, and Puff calmed everybody down. That's why I said, did he deserve so everything that he get today? Revolt TV and all these all other that, yeah, accomplishments. Yeah. He deserved it because he was smart enough to let cooler heads prevail in that room that mm -hmm. day. He knew it wasn't the time. Or the place. Or the place. And it's a time and place for everything. And see, I was so young, I was ready everywhere. Broad daylight, whatever, when I was young. So I had to learn some of that. Yeah, and that was like one of those lessons right this there. Is one of those lessons. Source you, Awards, the first. So let me award. ask you this: because you've seen so many different levels of just hip hop culture, and you spoke on, you know, the authenticity, and like when you have that, you last. Let's fast forward to the current climate right now. It's a lot of people going to different cities and you see a bunch of different fights and folks talking about check-in and, and all this other stuff. What's been the biggest difference between like this, this era now and, and back when y'all was doing Gangsta Grills and back even further during that backpack at the Source Awards? Like what's, what's like some of the differences? Cause I feel like it's a shift where- That drama sell now. <laughs> I mean like- They're just silly now. No respect. To me, the difference, uh, it's no respect for they self. And they playing around it's with really, fire. They playing around with fire. And the people they playing with is not really even, that dangerous. And they don't even know, yeah, the yeah. people they playing with is not really that dangerous, but they're silly, so it all could happen off of silliness. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you still so They hurt, really didn't you know want the mean? trouble. Yeah, but they didn't, got, they didn't talk they self into a bad situation by yeah. playing like you're something and now you gotta go through with it. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta live a, with the masses. That's a lot of that. Yeah. Right. That's what I see now. Right. They really- You done really played done, it up. You done, and you done played it up. You done sold the tickets to the play. To the play and then- And the seats is full. And the seats is full. We so ready for the show. We ready for the show and now a lot of them, they can't back down. You know what I mean? Like, so, so they end up doing something real silly you know what I mean, and 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 it end up it's just they're real silly. They 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 they're not respectable young guys. Like don't respect we used the culture and and the yeah, and the yeah, avenues what yeah, they have. Yeah. Now before we move on, I wanted to get back a little bit to the affiliates and um at the height of the affiliates. So how many albums did, did y'all drop with uh, uh three gangster three, girl three gangster girl albums volume one two and three a ton of tapes. The tapes is endless. So and that's the thing about it. I want to talk about those tapes. I remember like. Jeezy and Drama were kind of going back and forth mm -hmm. about who made who mm -hmm. and what tape or what person helped mold that so the South. Mm -hmm. Because that was the Camp Band the Snowman mm -hmm. tape and then you had the dedication with Wheezy. Mm -hmm. um, how important are those tapes to the to the the growth of the South? They're, they're really everything and not, I don't want to say everything just embodied, but they're so vital to everybody's career to everybody from T.I.'s career, to Jeezy career, mm -hmm. to Lil Wayne's career. Cause the, the tapes, mixtape thing was only happening in New York. So the South couldn't drop music like New York. New York was dropping more music of a catalog cause the mixtapes was there, the DJs was controlling yeah. it. Right. So no DJs was really controlling it in the South until we came. Until drama, canon, sense, you know what I mean, came and, 
and then I put them all together. And then, you know, every they always individuals. You know yeah, what I'm saying? But right. when I put them together Voltron. and formed the affiliates, yeah, it was like Voltron. So nobody had that movement in the South and we really had it and helped the marketing and the advertisement that we was coming with, with the Wu-Tang marketing and the Wu-Tang branding and different type of elements. You know, it was it was really unstoppable. You know what I mean? And, and like I said, everybody career who touched it, you, you know, from T.I. to Jeezy to everybody is so vital. And they they should be able to tell you that. Yeah, and, and so um, the raid. Yeah. How did the raid affect um, the mixtape game and then ultimately the affiliates? Because I know we want to get, we're going to get to the part about you know, the affiliates kind of, y'all going on separate ways, but mm. did, did the raid cause a lot of stress and strain on the mixtape game? Because y'all, like the raid happened, like y'all were. They thought y'all was like something totally different. Mm -hmm. And then when they seen all the cars and the cribs mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. off mm -hmm. mixtapes, oh, mixtapes, yeah. cause like they're yeah. in like um, I think drama and canons yeah. mug shots are in history books in yeah. schools. Yeah, they were talking about the laws mm -hmm. that came from that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, how Changed did the raid the affect the mixtape game and just and just the business in general? I mean, you know, we about, we, it, we actually took it and catapulted. We took the negative to a positive. They actually really didn't want to do mixtapes after the raid. I actually, you know, um, spearheaded them getting back into the mix. Because you went and bailed them out of jail, yeah, right? Exactly. When they had the raid, right? Them out, yeah, and did everything and came. They, you know, I fixed the studio back together. They had holes in the walls, looking for this holes in the ceiling. Thought y'all was so hiding money or yeah, something, huh? All kind of different things. They it thought all kind of different things. Took, took drama yeah, BMW? Yeah, BMWs, yeah. We had Ferraris and everything. You know, they were seeing different different type of cars, Benzes. It was all kind of joints. So they thought it was something else, but really the mixtapes, we was really booming. You know what I mean? We do, you know, different numbers, 30, 40, 50,000 independently off a of mixtape. And we was dropping them severally. So it was it was really, you know, right. the, the Carter of the mixtape game. The Carter like, of the mixtape game. Studio, yeah. I had a whole warehouse full of tapes, you know what I mean? So- You was pressing you know them up? Oh yeah, we was packaging them? Time. Yeah, yeah, it was serious, it was serious. And you know, and really they only got messed up when he dropped like somebody, you know, yada, yada, yada. But they dropped like a Michael Jackson and certain different things like that, that kind of was getting a little out of hand, you know what I mean? But when we was doing our own music independently, it really wasn't a problem. But Michael Jackson is something that they tried to hang their heads on, you know, mm. that's a different type of music. He got a different type of catalog, yeah. you know what I'm saying, when you play with him. But yeah, we ended up, I ended up bailing them out and coming home and you know, they froze a lot of money. We got a lot of money back. They paid a lot of fines, but actually from all that publicity, that's how I made feds taking pictures. Feds taking pictures, I had got that beat from Dame Grease. Dame Grease did all the beats for Nas and DMX and so on and so forth. Like I said, my Rough Riders on mm -hmm. my man from Harlem. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so I had that beat from Dame Grease. I gave that beat to Willie. Feds taking pictures was originally Willie's song, but um, when the feds kicked in the door- So you had the song, they, the song before the, song the raid? The song was already before the raid. Mm. That's what I'm saying. The That's Feds deep. taking pictures was before the raid. I gave it to Willie. Willie had three verses. When the feds kicked in the door, I said, it's a perfect time to get his song to drum. That's what I'm saying. All the strategy came out of my mind. Mm -hmm. I took the song back from Willie, to, gave it to drum, go when and got Rick Ross and Jim Jones and put all them on it and then put Willie back on it. You know what I mean? It's to give him a feature on it, but it was already Willie's song. So I gave it to drum. That's, and I said, for, since the feds kicked in the door, we're going to make the album. This is how we're going to set the album off on some Easy E. We're going to set it off right now with the gang, with the feds taking pictures single. We're going to use all the feds publicity and make the song. Boom. And that's how and the And make whole it all thing work. Started. So and everything worked from there. Like, <laughs> everything everything right worked from there. there. We, we tripled up. Like we was already booming, but when they did that, they 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 made us global. The outlaws we always popular. Going, we ended up going overseas. We was international. I mean, we was domestic, but we wasn't international. When they did that, we became international. I was international. A lot of dark man, me mm -hmm. being from the Wu. I got an international following. My heist of the century. I got. People with dark man tattoos in Germany, so on and so forth. But the affiliates, we wasn't international until that. That took us international. Then we killed the states, then killed overseas, Japan, Dubai, you know, Switzerland, Norway. You know what I mean? We was everywhere. Johannesburg, South Africa, all you know, I've been all around the world. Yeah, shout out to Willie too, man. Yeah, he told me a crazy Willie. story about yeah, going to J Lo crib. See, ooh. <laughs> see, ooh. <laughs> told me a crazy yeah, story was, about going to J Lo crib. Chilling B, we chilling B, yachts, everything. And ask even Willie. <laughs> 
Yeah, see, <laughs> <laughs> I can't even go yeah, on. Right? Can, I got yeah. things going in the yeah. Yeah. things going on. Yeah. Yeah. Too much. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, cause I was, yeah, if we could just take the images yeah. in here. Yeah. Well, see, and that's, and right that's, right how, the that's how the podcast came up because we have all these stories and I try to throw them oops. He'll he'll talk about what he can, <laughs> things he can't talk about, he'll move away from. Yeah. So I know, I know. Yeah. Want to move away from. So when you guys got the deal though with Atlantic, because you were with Atlantic with the Gangster Grills, the first deal came with Atlantic, and it was it was Grand Hustle, you know, affiliated too. It was okay. Grand Hustle affiliated. Tip, tip, tip. y'all. We was messing with Tip, and I, he was on Atlantic at the time. So we went in with Tip, but when I got there, they already knew me. I was gonna say that. That's I'm what was so crazy. Craig Kalman signed me as Lot of Dark Man. Back. I never put the album out back 10 years ago and probably was at that time. Yeah, because I went in there oh, probably about 05. Oh, 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 so it really six. wasn't, no, it wasn't. No, it, it wasn't even 10. Almost 10. Almost it was like 10, nine, eight, probably eight, 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 right around there. Because right yep, yep. it was like 96, I think it was. I got signed. So probably was, yeah, yeah, right around there. Right, right around 10, yeah, right around 10, yeah. Whatever, whatever. But so we walk in, T.I. ushered it too. We walk into Craig, you know what I mean? He, you know what I mean? La, you know what I mean? All the way back, baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we did it again and and dropped the Gangsta Girl album. Like even the beat for Outcast, the Outcast, all the storytelling too. You know, I put that beat together. I picked that beat for them, the the, the Pharrell beat. We sent it to Pharrell the first time to um so Pharrell for did the that first beat? Gangsta Girl album. No, Pharrell didn't do that beat. Cannon that did beat, it. you know. The beat for Outcast or the beat for Pharrell? That was on the Gangsta Grill. The Gangsta Grill, that was the Cannon, Gangsta right? The Gangsta Grill, that was Cannon, uh, did the beat for Outcast, four, right? Art of Storytelling. Yeah. That was Cannon, but I'm just saying, they didn't like it at first. And I was like, send it to Outcast, and 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 they did it. You know, we sent it to somebody else, and Outcast ended up doing that. Like, I a and would all that music. Okay. That's what I'm saying, and then Pharrell, he, we sent him a beat, he didn't like it, sent it back. I told Drum, send it back to him. He sent it back to him, Pharrell did it, it was crazy. It sound just like Pharrell, so. You know, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, as far as all the music came out my head from scratch for Gangsta Grills, volume one, two, and three, you know, the albums, you know what I mean? So and you, some just, good mixtapes, too. Yeah, the a Dead lot of President mixtapes. Oh, yeah, was good. Dead Presidents, ooh, Notorious, mm -hmm. L.A.D., The Divide and Conquer. Divide and Conquer, We yeah. got some joints, um, 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 Living Notoriously. Yeah. Yeah, all of them online, too, you know what I mean? Um, you can check them out, too. Killed the, um, the, uh, for the Love of Money. Oh, yeah, we were smashing mm -hmm. Love of Money. Love of Money, actually, yeah, that that's for Willie joint. You talking about the joint uh, with Trey the, Songs on the hook? No, that too. Oh, that but you talking about um, the other joint and off, off the off the how, um, everybody, how everybody doing now? Yeah, we was already kind of doing that. We was in that vein. Yeah. That vein was like everybody rapping over the '90s beats. We was rapping over the '90s beats in 06, 05, and 08, and 08, and, and, and 10. Yeah, like, yeah. And now it's a wave though, because Fabulous yeah. and, and and it's really started and Jada picked it up. Mm -hmm. But the funniest thing is. I was doing Quiet Storm. If you listen to Living Notoriously, Quiet yeah. Storm is on Living Notoriously. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, it always, if you listen to um, AZ and Nas, um, the joint is on, you know, uh, Dead President. Dead President. So yeah. we was already in that vibe. Fab got a lot of credit for that vibe right now, which was yeah. he should. Yeah, yeah. But we was already in that vibe. Mm -hmm. If you go listen to the Notorious LAD, we got them. We got them the same beats. We doing them and we doing them. Yeah. You know what I mean? We ain't just playing. Y'all was bodying them. No, we bodying them. You know what I mean? On all the mixtapes. We got new music coming too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Me and Bunch just do some new joints the other day. Because y'all are um, all on social media. I got all your streaming stuff together too. Yeah. But before we get there, so now kind of like the, the separation of the affiliates. Like how mm -hmm. did it kind of like, because you, I feel like you guys, like it's like when a team win a couple rings and they could have won two or three more if they stuck of course, together. Of course, I mean, but that's always, you know, everybody has it, you know what I mean? Everybody has it from a dip set to- Yeah, yeah, you know, perfect a, example. A, excuse me, a G unit. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it just happens in business and, you know, friendships and, you know, different brotherhoods, you know what I mean? But we still all talk, we still all cool and we do a lot of different things, we see each other and, you know, we probably be talking in a couple seconds, but, it's really just different ways, you know, everybody, like I said, I led the whole thing and then once you get to a certain point, everybody kind of want to be their own leaders. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it ain't, it really ain't nothing, nothing really happened. Yeah. Ain't nothing really happened to this or that, nothing, nothing. Just, just kind of went, because yeah, some good careers leadership. came out of that. Yeah, of course, excellent careers, excellent Cannon's careers. Cannon is the a and Def Jam right now, right? Yeah, yeah, yep, a okay. and r Def Jam. And it's just different, you know, musical, you know, ventures. You know, you could see, like, you know, the 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 little Uzi verse in that direction is different from 
the direction. Oh, because yeah, they they manage him, right? They manage. No, they don't really. No, they, they, really just, they just they just um sign a fine fee, yeah, and okay. they brought him. They they usher him into the machine. Okay, so I'm saying their situation is different. They don't really have the power to sign anyone. They bring them to the machine, and the machine like them. Okay, all you know right. What I'm saying. So the music. So business. yeah, it's different. It's different. And you, drama tell you that. I think Drum said it in one of his interviews. They don't really have the power to sign anybody. You know what I'm saying? But okay. it's, they can bring them. They can introduce them to the machine and get a finder. Get a finder's fee. Yeah. So, you got a question? Go ahead. I do. Go ahead. <clears throat> because you've been independent, pretty much your whole life, mm -hmm. and done things your way. Mm -hmm. And we can lend that on being part of student government and everything back in school or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, that's kind of set the tone for your decisions as far as your career. Mm -hmm. You know, being able to say, I can control my own destiny. I got my own money. Mm -hmm. I'm straight on this deal because mm -hmm. it doesn't look, it's not appealing to me because mm -hmm. I feel like I can do better here. Mm -hmm. 2018, mm -hmm. new artists wanting to come in the game. Mm -hmm. They say, can I get five minutes with you? Give me three things I need to do. What are you recommending for a new artist? To get signed or just to, to be or successful? Just to get on. To, to be successful. It's a lot of people who get on no, and I'm, they and, never yeah. come out. I'm trying to clarify. Like you're talking about, yeah. Yeah. I mean, to be successful and have a Longevity. career. Longevity. Okay. You know, because there's a lot of people get signed left and right. Like, and they, they should have never come out. Of course. Yeah, yeah. I want to I wanna be in this industry. I want to be successful. I want to have a 20-year career. What I do mean, you? What do you? What do you get? What gems are you gonna drop? I'm saying it's like, you know, me. Certain people, it's such a blessing. You really can't duplicate sometimes what, you know, anointment. What's needed? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can't exactly. really. Some is to, to have a 20 year career is really anointment. It doesn't really happen. It's most a very career, rare thing. Most careers is one or two years or four years as a rapper. One or two songs. Years, you know what I mean? So right. for us to still be able to do things and do shows, like I said, I just got finished doing Dilla Day in Detroit with, you know, Jay Electronica and Obi Trice and that's Jay-Z artists and and and, and Royce Fine Nine and, 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 you know, Eminem artists, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. 20 years later, it's like, one thing, you gotta have your own vision. Though if I would recommend, you gotta have your own vision. Mm -hmm. You gotta have a vision, you gotta have a, a, your own team. You know what I mean? And you got to be willing to hustle yourself and, and you got to be willing to get a mentor, you know what I mean? A mentor that do it. If, if I could recommend three things, got to have a vision, got to have a mentor, you know, somebody that understands business, you know what I mean? And um, be willing to hustle yourself, you know what I mean? Because now you really could do it easier. Like I just got the new digital deal with mm -hmm. Sony like okay. a couple years ago. You know what I mean? I signed it like two years ago. So I've been doing a lot of things digitally on iTunes and Google Music Play. Like I just dropped a joint called Lavish vs. Savage. Me, Lil Wayne, Lil Boosie. I'm finna uh, drop the Lil Boosie video and Soldier Boy. That's the latest joint. Then I dropped a joint before that called like Play By La Rules with Gucci Man, Yo Gotti, and Birdman. All these is on the iTunes and on the um, Google Play. You know what I mean? Spotify too. And then I dropped a joint before that called La Familia with um Jim Jones, T.I., Pimp C, you know what I'm saying? Willie the Kid, of course. And then um, you know, I got a joint La Luminati with Black Thought from the Roots and Uncle Murder, G Unit. So I've been dropping joints, they EPs, they all EPs okay. through the digital AMG platform. So everything is on your phone now. So I've been working that platform. Like you said, it's just it's different from having a warehouse full of CDs yeah, yeah. to now everything is digital. So mm -hmm. we just transforming into the digital world. You know what I mean? So now people buying it in France and Japan and so on and so forth right off their phone. Okay. So you know yeah. what I mean? How was that transition for you um, into the social media world too? Because I, you're you're a private guy, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying. We got we got some good stories out of you today, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I, and I know I got lucky, so I know when mm -hmm. to push my luck and when mm -hmm. to stop. But I know you don't really, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so I, I know when you know get the stories out of you. Yeah. Um, but how do you feel? Because like you, I think we had a conversation a couple of years ago. I'm like, yo, you gotta like the Instagram got the pop. The Twitter got the pop. He's like, man, Ma, he always say, Ma, I don't, I don't like, I really don't <laughs> want, funny, man. Right? I don't want to be yeah, putting. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, bro, you got to tweet more, put yeah, your IG up. Yeah, I'm with it. I'm so, with so it. So, how, so how, how do you feel? I mean, it's fun. It's fun. It's easy. It's just different. It's like I'm used to going to the gym, but now you could just work out at home. 
You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, you know what I mean? It's easy for me. Like once I rapped, I just, I just, it was funny to me. So, but now that I wrap my mind around, okay, this is what they want to see because I'm in the entertainment business. Oh, it's easy. It's yeah. fun. You, you know what I mean? Oh, it's like, yeah, you got to like tell a story or, yeah. or post no, a piece. Like, like, nah, I don't want to buy no nah, my car. I really or... didn't. Yeah, I really didn't. I really wasn't into that. It took me a while <laughs> to understand certain things. But you know, you know, you got to know. Now I, I, I know how to do it. I ain't tripping. Crap, you know what I mean? Oh, okay. Post okay. the range, That's post the bend. Yeah, 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 you know, it's all good. Like, it's fun. You know what I mean? Now it makes it easier for me. It's just cool. Like, cause I really have an interesting, uh, 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 you know, a blessed life. You know what I mean? Yeah, all yeah. praises do. So, you know, it's easy for me to yeah. be at the game, Golden State, post to Kevin Durant and watching da 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 yeah. with my sons or something. You know what I mean? Like, I got pictures I ain't even post yet. Like I got all kinds of pictures. Like I don't, I ain't mean, I ain't even. My catalog is crazy. Like my hard drive. Like I'm saying, like doing a documentary and so on and so forth. I'm putting all that together. We doing right it now. till we involved. You know I mean? He gonna yeah, get us involved be, in yeah, the documentary. Yeah, definitely, that's definitely, right. That's hard. I mean, you know, and I was thinking, you know, the rise of AMG and this and that and the other. And like you even was saying, go back to even the rise of a lot of dark man before the braids. AMG and the all braids. That and all that Everybody got the like braids I tell the whole now. Story. I'm gonna tell it. I'm gonna tell it. I'm gonna tell it. And you know, I gotta put it together interestingly, but it's a long story, so I gotta do it right. Everybody got the braids. Now. Everybody got the braids. Everybody got the braids. Mm -hmm. If you don't know, La was the first guy I Originators. knew. Originators. La and Kwani, Kwani because Kwani yeah. had him as a kid, yeah. right? Yeah. Originator. No, Paul. Paul, Paul, Paul had, had him. him. Yeah. La had, had the four. We had four to six braids mm -hmm. on top with the, mm -hmm. with the with the fade on the side. Mm -hmm. Everybody got that look with now. The, with the bun. With the, the and he was putting the bun. Mm -hmm. They call calling the man bun now, but it's funny. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's interesting, but it's it's, it's like I said, it's 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 hard for innovators. And it's easy for impersonators. Anybody, you know, it's, when you do something first, like Cat Williams was saying, I'm a I'm a frontline guy. Not that I'm the first one to do it, but yeah. I was doing it in 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 the era when nobody really wasn't doing it. You know what I'm saying? I was the younger era, so you know what I mean. Yada yada yada. You know what I mean? Because I I really put it all together, and like I said, I got it from Dirty. You know what I mean? Dirty, God bless Dirty. He was like one of the first ones to do it, and he wasn't the first one to do it, but in the world, in, in By the dirty music ODB. industry, ODB, excuse yeah. me, God bless the Lord. You know what I mean? O ODB, he was one of the first ones to do it, but he didn't He didn't do the bun. I did the bun. Yeah. He didn't do the bun. He did the wow style, but yeah. he never did the bun, but it, it was a similar style. You know what I mean? But you know what I mean? like I said, yeah, my style's put together crazy. Me, I think I'm an ultimate fighter. Like, if you just ask me, because I studied the Jizza, I studied the Rizza, I studied Ray, I studied Ghost, I studied, you know what I mean, You God, I studied Master Killer. I got so many different styles, I studied Deck, and then I got my own style, and it's like, so when I fight, I could fight in so many so different many styles. Ways. That's how the Gangsta Grills and Affiliates, and right. it all came, it was so many different directions. Like, you, if you listen to the albums, we got Outkast, but then we got Young Jock, then we got Jada Kiss, then we got, you know what I mean? It was just, it, the album is a collage of so many different styles. Then yeah. we got Nas, then we got Busta Rhymes, then we got Scarface, then we got T.I., then we got Killer Michael, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. then you got Bun B. It was so it was so cold. The collage, it, people didn't really notice that it was everywhere. It wasn't a southern album, right? It wasn't. Mm -hmm. But we was based out of Atlanta, but it was everybody was involved. Everybody from everywhere. Everybody from. And everywhere. still, the best story today, right now, you, you took old girl to Popeyes. That's the illest. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the illest I mean, story. Yeah. You can't knock that. So before, yeah. you got a question before we go? Or go ahead. I got I got a couple questions. Okay, go All ahead. Because right. you talked about the Mustang. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you've driven a bunch of different cars, had a mm. diff bunch of different cars. Mm. What has been, over the years, your top two to three cars that you've owned or driven? Because I'm a car guy. Mm. So getting in the car, you know, it's 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 an extension, and, and it gives mm. you an opportunity to just kind of let your hair down and mm. whatever. So mm. what has been, like, your top two, three cars that you was like, man, like, this is my shit, like... Probably me, Ferrari... And um, Which and Ferrari? a Porsche F fifty. Okay. And 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 a Porsche Panamera for me, for me. But then I was with Money May, and we was in the Wraith with the mink seats. You know what I mean with Floyd. So that's probably you know just riding in. But for me driving my own Ferrari and a Porsche. Nice. Yeah. Nice. You know what I mean? But you know what I mean? Like I I, I never really wanted a rose. Really, like, I never really was a rose type of guy. Not to even say, but the ride with money made. Yeah, no ride with money made. Like, 
It's funny. You know what I mean? But I know, yeah, you feel me. You really don't know. You know. With the mink seats, though? With the mink seats and the mink seats. You, you know what you yeah, should have did? Money Give me the keys to the but one I'm, without yeah, the mink seats. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, ah. Uh, yeah, money hard. Yeah, but so, so on that note, yeah, just, we were just riding. I was out there with money, too, man. My, that's why I wanted it, my illest joints riding. You know what I mean? Just riding. I was doing it for a couple months ago, man. He crazy, man. Yeah, that's my dog, man. He's amazing. Yeah, same guy. Yeah, same guy, always. Same always. Guy. Yeah, same um, guy. So, uh, well, we we talked about you know the music and everything. Before we go, um, one or two Wu Tang stories because I'm like you act like you hung around like ODB, like you like you was at the Source I Awards got, with Suge. I got I, like your favorite ODB story. You killed it because that's funny. That was just fin- that's the one I was gonna tell. Me ODB, God bless him. You know what I mean? The funny we was in Miami. And um, Akineli was performing. Akineli had a couple hits, Put It In Your Mouth. Yeah, we talked about that last week. Akineli mm-hmm. from Queens, you know what I mean? On the so, strip clubs yeah, now. He yeah, got all yeah, of them. yeah, on the strip clubs now. So it, we, it was doing the thing in Miami, and Dirty came through. It was his show, and we came, he, Dirty came through. Man, he um, asked me to do a couple songs and get the mic. And um, Dirty did a couple songs and wouldn't give him the mic back. <laughs> Dirty just started doing all kinds of songs and all kind of. I can know he was asking for the mic, asking for the mic. Then they got into an argument and got into a little tug of war. On stage? On stage. Wow. Right? And then um, Dirty wouldn't give him the mic back. They fighting for the mic. One of Akinelli men's pull out, and then one of our men's pull out, and just, just shots is fired and all. You know what I mean? Went wow. wild. And he ducking off the stage, went on the stage. Yeah, yeah, it went, went, it went wrong. Mm. I mean, I, that's just like, a, just show you how real it was f- just from that, you know what I mean? And Dirty was wild, you know what I mean? God bless him, Dirty was wild because he, he shouldn't have did that. He didn't give my man the mic nah, back. <laughs> yeah, Ak wanted the mic back. He wanted you know what I mean? <laughs> <Straight> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it went, it went wrong that day, but you know what I mean? Yeah, that's one of the wildest stories. Oh, no, I got, but I, I got, can't, I guess that was a negative story, go right? Ahead, yeah, yeah, I probably should have told a positive story. We, go ahead. It's balanced, though. It's balanced, though. So never, get, 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 a get a positive then. Because we can do this all day with you, my, man. My give man us the dirty, meat seats now. My man Dirty, okay, my man Dirty. Um, got on the plane. He tried to hit hit a shorty. Had a shorty try to. He tried to do it on the plane with shorty. Try to get shorty. <laughs> yeah, my uncle tried to hit her on the plane, and they turned the plane around in the air. Put us off the plane. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, I've never heard they turned the plane around. Turned the plane around. How long was y'all in the air for? It had to be about. Maybe 15, 20 minutes, maybe. Because you know how hard it is to land the plane's yes. a schedule. Yeah, they, you can't yes. just come back. Oh, no, they did that. So ODB tried, that. To, ODB he tried to get some buns just, they, they turned, on the plane. On the so plane. he must have been in the middle of getting the buns. Th- he, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He killed him. Yeah. It yeah. wouldn't stop it. It wouldn't stop it. And that's, yeah. And they like, and sir, they, excuse y'all, me. Y'all, <laughs> y'all, y'all hitting it on the nose. Uh, that's how that went. God bless him. And, That's how that went. And turned the plane around. Turned the plane around. And kicked just y'all off. Yeah, just kicked just all off. Yes. Who us. was with yeah, you? Yeah, and we was going away to Portland. Me, uh, old Dirty Bassett, 12 o'clock, his brother, Shorty Shit Stain, his other cousin. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was about five of us. Stopped all that. You, bread. you, 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 and him gotta go. All of y'all <laughs> go. Yeah. Yeah. Did he finish? No. He ain't finished the buzz? Nah. Shorty didn't leave with him? They ain't kick her yeah, off? Yeah, they kicked everybody <laughs> off. Yeah, she gotta go too. Yeah, she gotta go too. Dirty Dirty was a monster though. Dirty used to walk, I mean, we walk right in a restaurant before we could even sit down and get the food, before we could be seated. Dirty see something he liked, pick it out, and he ready to go. We ain't, and I ain't even order no food. <laughs> Word, that's my big bro. I used to be, I, I ain't even order the food. Yeah, I was hungry for yeah, real. I you, was hungry. Now I gotta figure out some total some to, to eat. Yeah. Cause now we back at the crib. Cause he gotta and, go. And yeah. And he got you know, to. Yeah, he got to. And we back at the crib now, and now I gotta figure out something else. You know what I mean? And I mm-hmm. had my mouth fixed on where we Ooh, was at. And he see it, and yeah. she with it, cause he ODB. she with it. Cause he ODB. And she with it, yeah, God bless the Lord. 
Wow, man. Wow. I I would, oh man, we've been here for a minute. I would love to ask more questions, man. Cause I know the stories are. Yeah, we'll get part two. We'll get, you know we'll, we'll, yeah, definitely, we'll get part two, man, for sure. Cause I, and then we'll have a release date for the documentary too. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course, we'll yeah. do that. We'll do that. Cause it's a lot of legacy a lot and of, a lot yeah. of, of history. We, we ain't even get. Yeah, we did. We'll do part two and three because this is just a tip of the iceberg. There's so many stories man. that we can go on, but we'll get it to it. No doubt. Yeah, well, I definitely you know appreciate I mean? you coming to fuck with us, man. Yeah, yeah, you know, thank it's you for a pleasure me. every time. Always, thank you for you having me. No, I always yeah. learn something new, a different little wrinkle about, yeah. you know, because you've seen a lot of stuff, man. Yes, 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 yes. You know, it's appreciated. And I, I love to, get, you know, just tell the stories and kick it. I just, we know we be just kicking it. It really ain't yeah, even. Yeah, let the like camera run. Story. Yeah, right. just kicking it. You know yeah, yeah, man? for sure. And you know, I appreciate it, man. I, you know, I've been, I, I tell people all the time, man, like, it's very few people, like, people don't, well, I said it before on the air, but when my little brother died, um, the first person that reached out to me, contacted me, texted me was LAD. Mm -hmm. I picked up my phone, it was LAD. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about, like, right after, La hit me first. Always, you know, and I always say this about, like, Will, too, or, um, but always answer my text when he got a chance. Always answer my calls when he got a chance, man, and... And that's like real. That's, mm -hmm. that's that's greater than anything anybody could do in your position because a lot of people play that funny role. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. for the most part, like even Floyd, we went, we went to Vegas, took us right into the club, hung mm -hmm. out with us, mm -hmm. Eric Amin, and we partying, mm -hmm. everything. It's all organic, man. So especially from y'all generation, man, from that era, man, mm -hmm. like y'all helped raise me, man. Mm -hmm. And and they always joke, I always tell them like I'm the because when we on the air, I'm the youngest of the OGs, and this is mm -hmm. why one of the reasons because I was raised by guys like La. Mm -hmm. So I really appreciate you coming through, man. Mm -hmm. And like he said, it's the tip of the iceberg. We're gonna yeah. definitely get some more stories because mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I want to touch on like the um, the touring with the Woo, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I know it's mm -hmm. wild stories there mm -hmm. overseas, mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll get deeper into the documentary for and sure. then um, and the new music too. So for we thank sure. you for coming through, man. We appreciate it. Appreciate everybody tuning in. Absolutely. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and before we bounce, give everybody watching the rundown where they can hear the music. Yeah, for sure. Anything related to LAD, yeah. let them know. It's CEO LAD on the Twitter, CEO LAD on the Instagram, Embassy AMG on the Facebook, and LAD on the Facebook. So all of them is going to be synchronized, but you can get most of the information from there. You know what I'm saying? Get most of the information from those sites. CEO LAD and uh, Embassy AMG on the Facebook. And before we go, I know we keep saying this, but before we go, we always do this. Top five artists, dead or alive, all time, and then your top five personal favorite. Top five artists? Me? Top yeah. five artists? Just hip hop? Hip hop. And then we do yep. dead or alive, and then we'll do your, your top five favorite, personal favorite. Um, Mm, I probably got the same ones. The top five is um, Wu Tang, um, Biggie, um, Jay Z, Nas, um, Pac. Mm, mm, that's probably my top five. Top right? five. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Hold up. Ice Cube. Ice Cube. So it got to be a sub right yeah, there. Yeah, Ice Cube. Yeah, mm -hmm. Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that, that's, your, that's your personal five, too, or you got a personal five? Because sometimes people like artists is not necessarily yeah, the top that five. that would be my personal five, too. My personal five. Oh, no, no, no. Well, yeah, my personal five would probably would be different. I would go my personal five, Wu-Tang, Jay Nas, Big, you know, Fab, Fabulous, um, um, you know, Jada. I like Jada. Um, mm, yeah. Right there? Yeah, okay. Probably right there. Okay. Well, we appreciate it, man. Appreciate you Absolutely. coming through, man. And uh, thanks for having. Gonna look out for part two, part three. Yeah. You know, yeah. might start a good running. series, man. Yeah, we we got new music series. coming. We might start a new series, do, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thanks for having me, bro. Yeah. All day. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in, man. Keep it locked, y'all. Y'all know what it is. Peace. Yeah, man. That ODB story, crazy, man. Yeah, dirty was wild. Dirty was wild. Dirty was wild. Dirty was wild.